Come on. Pwn here and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about pneumatic blasters. That is air pressure blasters. You might be familiar with these things. Uh, the Nerf Titan was probably one of the best air pressure blasters that have come to the market but there were quite a few made in the past and I'm going to talk about a couple things that I created. Now I hesitated to post this video. All this stuff that I'm going to show you I made about a year and a half ago when I sort of got into this hobby in the first place and I didn't want to post it because this stuff is ugly, it's not very war practical, it really has nothing to do with Nerf other than it's designed to fire the projectiles that Nerf has created and these things can also be potentially dangerous. With that in mind I guess here we go. So on my Portland trip I found a Zeus and in that Zeus there were some balls and the other night I was playing with my balls and I thought to myself I wonder if I can fire these with my air cannon and so I came up with a, sort of the same PVC structure that I come up with to fire other projectiles and sure enough it worked. So I dug all the stuff out and I've been kind of going over it again and I figured while it was out I'll make a video about it. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about homemade air cannons. The one I created is right here. The air chamber that holds the pressure is just regular Schedule 40 PVC. Now if you do any sort of Googling, you will find that people tell you to never keep air pressure in these. These are meant strictly for water pressure and any burst or continued pressure ratings are for water only. And that is because water cannot be compressed. Air, however, can be compressed which is what makes air cannons function properly. So why am I telling you this is dangerous and also showing this to you? I know that a lot of people out there are going to find this stuff eventually and they're going to see it for themselves on YouTube and the person that posted that video, they're not going to explain that this is dangerous at all because maybe they don't know that. I didn't know that when I created this, uh, but I still use it. Nothing bad has happened to me so far. However, I never take this above 40 PSI. Usually I operate it at about 20 PSI. That may still be dangerous, so I still would not attempt to recreate this. Hopefully in this video you'll get this sort of thing out of your system. You can watch me do this. I'll be in danger. You won't. But don't recreate what I'm about to show you. Seriously. And if you feel the urge, if you absolutely have to, I would personally recommend not taking it over 20 PSI and absolutely not taking it over 40 PSI. With that in mind, let's talk about this a little bit. This is just your typical PVC pipe. I picked it up at Lowe's. In the back here is a Schrader valve. I've drilled a hole in the cap just big enough to fit the valve through. This is a typical valve that's in any sort of bicycle tire. I pushed it through with super glue, let that set and dry. And then I took epoxy putty on the inside and put it right where the valve goes through the hole. I've also filled up the cap with Smoothcast 65D. Uh, in order to create the strongest seal possible. I figured if this thing was going to fail, this would be the failure point right where the valve enters the PVC tank. Coming up through here, we've got a coupler uh, that takes it from a 2 inch PVC pipe down to a 3 quarter inch because that is what you need to fit into this. This is a sprinkler valve or solenoid. Uh, this is activated by electrical current, basically when the current is flowing through it, it's in one position, open, and when there's no current flowing through it, it's in another position, closed. It's being run by a drill. This is my roommate's drill. He actually dropped it off a ladder at one point uh, and broke it pretty substantially, so he let me cannibalize it for this system. This is actually held together with wood screws now, uh, and then it's actually held onto the three-quarter inch pipe here using some Smoothcast 65D uh, with a little bit of bonding of hot glue. Now the Nerf battles I typically have are inside, so I, I have used this in the past. I probably won't use this in the future with other people around just because of all the literature I've read that warn against putting air pressure into PVC because any sort of impact could possibly make this explode. So in the past I've used this in my house. It doesn't have its own pressure gauge, so I use either an electric air pump with a pressure gauge or I have a bike pump with a pressure gauge. Uh, at one point I also calibrated it to get around 35 PSI required about 25 pumps from a regular uh, sort of handheld bike pump. You've got the bike pump on the Schrader valve and you filled it up to your desired PSI. 
then uh, I actually have to hold the battery here because the connection is poor, but you just pull the trigger and it fires out some horribly loud air. Now in order to get this to fire the Nerf style projectiles, I've made a few different attachments to go on the front. The first one I made was just a simple tube. I beveled the edge here so it would accept the missiles better. But these missiles were actually designed by Make Test Battle. I took their design completely and completely copied it for this air blaster. Uh, and it is right here. Uh, it's made out of a squishy stress ball, some pool noodle, some foam from a camping mat, and then this is two millimeter foam from Joann's. And there's also a little dowel in there, a little piece of dowel to keep it from blowing out the front. Now this thing just fits in real nicely. This is what I use the 20 PSI for. Anything above 20 PSI is just going to destroy this missile. I've destroyed numerous missiles, different prototypes of my own design that I made. This ended up still being the best missile for operation with this thing, but I never take it over 20 PSI. The next thing I created was a, sort of the bullhorns, and this is to fire the Nerf missiles. So they fit on like that. And here you can see, in order to make the fit tight, I've just taken some electrical tape and wrapped it around there. And then these are just some elbows, PVC pipe, and here this is actually CPVC. Now all the PVC is of course connected with uh, PVC cement, and that's just sort of a chemical reaction. It melts the plastic together and creating the bond. Two part, you get the purple primer and then you get the glue, get it on there and then fit your pieces together. Then the next thing I came up with, this was sort of the shotgun. So this has the seven barrels. This is two inch PVC with the half inch PVC inserted in the front. I got it all lined up with a little hot glue on the back and then I filled up all the gaps with SmoothCast 65D using an eyedropper in some cases but it just creates an excellent seal in here so that the air is only gonna be traveling out through the CPVC. And the darts fit in there with a little bit of a twist, and this is a sort of a seven round shotgun. Now I do take this up to 35 to 40 PSI, but it fires reasonably well at 20 PSI. Now the reason I broke out all this stuff again was because of the rival ball rounds, or the high impact round, whatever you wanna call those. So the other night I made this, uh, this is just three quarter inch PVC, uh, and it fits the rival balls pretty easily. They just, you just kind of stuff them in the front, push them down. I can jam about six in here. I'm kind of hard pressed to do any more than that. I've done, I've tested four. Now that I've loaded six, I'm actually gonna be testing that later in this video after not having fired it, so I guess we'll see what happens. Four works pretty well, but I will leave this loaded for later. So after I created my first sort of mo more mobile kind of bazooka air cannon, uh, I wanted something more stationary, and if you dig around in my Instagram, you'll actually find a small video that I did where I created sort of a, a machine gun nest in my house. It had a Vulcan, and then I also had this thing set up so that you could activate that in an emergency and fire off some missile. I actually created another one of these uh, in order to do that. This one actually is larger. I, I still take it up to about 40 PSI to fire off the Nerf missiles, but the larger volume allows me to fire more projectiles. Higher pressure is gonna allow you to fire faster projectiles. More air volume will allow you to fire more projectiles. So my desire to do that led me to creating this sort of thing. And this thing is super ghetto. This whole thing is super ghetto. Since I made this, I've never made anything less refined and disgustingly ugly. This is horrible. Don't build anything that I've built here. Seriously, it's ugly and impractical. Just like the CPVC here, I put a little bit of tape and then you can just load the missiles onto there and it fires four Nerf missiles. Uh, I created sort of a trigger, sort of like I guess a dynamite sort of thing. And you just push down this button and it fires the missiles. Now while this thing uses this drill battery to activate it, uh, this is 12 volts and 12 volts will activate the solenoid. When you drop the voltage down any more than that, it probably will not activate the solenoid. So the drill battery definitely works as well as on the way batteries, which are terrible batteries, but this thing is also ghetto anyway, I might as well be using ghetto batteries as well. Alright, well now that you've heard a little bit of introduction and you've been very forewarned to not copy any of this, if you have another desire to copy this, just come watch this video again, watch some firing demonstrations and get it out of your system. Seriously, don't make any of this. What's up? Okay, so everything about this video is going to be ghetto. Ghetto lighting, we got the cups. For some reason, my very first videos, I really like using cups to shoot at because they're kind of fun. I still like shooting at them sometimes, but I just kind of 
fell off wanting to set those up over and over again. But yeah, let's set up some cups and let's shoot some things at basically point blank range with an air cannon. All right, so a quick look here. We've got just a wooden platform and this is holding some CPVC and some vinyl tubing, which I've just shoved in the back here. Uh, I actually sort of, I got it hot with a heat gun and then just jammed it in there. It's all pressure fit. And then if you look under here, we've just got some brackets here that I've drilled out, screwed in. This is still pretty wobbly. Uh, this is just a tripod I got from a Goodwill. And then if you follow that back down here, we've got sort of a crazy hose system using CPVC and PVC. And then a larger vinyl tube that runs over here. This is also just pressure fit because there's not actually any need to hold pressure here. It's just as the air passes through, that's just, this is where it's heading out. Um, and then here we've got the sprinkler solenoid valve. Uh, there is pressure being held right here and then back through the larger PVC air tank, Schrader valve. And then if you can see this right here, uh, this is super ghetto electrically wired up here. Got some ghetto little connectors here and that's connected to a little ghetto AA holder with some ghetto batteries. Uh, can I say ghetto enough times here? I don't think so. This is probably the worst quality project I have ever done, uh, but with some pretty decent results, which is kind of a shame because this is this is awful. And then if we take a over look over here, this is the actual air cannon, and then I've just got that hooked up to an air, a little air compressor I bought off Amazon. Uh, and then over here we've got various attachments and uh, projectiles. Without further ado, let's uh, let's shoot some stuff. All right, so first up, we've got the missile and just taking this up to 20 PSI. Next up, we got the bullhorns and we're gonna take this up to 30 PSI. set these cups up again. Now this is sort of the shotgun uh, with little nerf darts and uh, we'll take this up to 30 psi though I have done 40. We'll see what 30 psi does. I haven't actually tested this in a long time. All right now into the wall at 40 psi. Alright, now some rival rounds, the thing that kind of rekindled my passion for the old air cannon. Now my theory with this one was that you could hide behind a corner or set this up somewhere out in the open and then you could hide behind cover kind of see somebody coming in and then push the button and fire some missiles off at them. So that was why I came up with this ridiculously ghetto actuator uh, which releases the air. So let's fill this up and I'll shoot some cups. I think I'm gonna go around 35 psi with this one. Now not only can this fire the missiles, but you can also just twist in some darts. We'll just go 30 for this one. I guess that was a little high. We'll do another one. Now I just actually realized that this actually holds mega darts. They don't have a tight fit, so I'm not sure what this is going to do, but we'll learn together. Still works pretty well. That was a mega dart. All right, let's do one last demonstration with elite darts in the bullhorns. Let's just throw it up to 40 psi and see if we can blow these darts up. All right, and as you can see, that is powerful enough to create a nice big crack in this plastic cup, which really isn't that impressive, but still, it did that. Way to go, Dart. 
All right guys, that is it for me today. I just wanted to show you my air cannon setup I created a while back when I first got into the Nerf hobby. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And remember, it's not about having fun, it's about staying safe, becoming as knowledgeable as you can, and having a great time nerfing.